Awaken to hair growth. Awaken to hair growth because there is possibility to get your hair back. Awaken to hair growth because we're not told that we're able to conquer and overcome alopecia. Awaken to hair growth because I want to be a positive light and beacon for you because I've healed my alopecia and now I help others do the same. With different types of alopecia, men, women, children of all ages, of all races and ethnicities. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Alopecia Angel podcast. I am your host, Johanna Dahlman. Today, we're going to be talking about manifesting. This might be a several part phase of episodes just because there's so much to talk about. And in this seven steps to living your best life and including manifesting your hair growth and anything else you want, there's just so much to unpack. There really is. I don't know if you know about manifesting. I truly believe that A, it works, but B, that it's actually, I've seen it in my life. I've seen it occur in my life. I've, I I can honestly say I've manifested several things in my life, big things. And it's been amazing to do so. It's been amazing to, to say like, I manifested this and, and to have that knowing that inner knowing that knowledge and that confirmation that this reality is happening. I don't know if you know, but manifesting is actually science. It's not pseudoscience, but it is a science. And it's where science and wisdom come together. Let me just go ahead and read a portion of this book that I'm reading. And it says, manifesting is a meeting of science and wisdom. It is a philosophy to live by and self-development practice to help you live your best life. For those of you who don't know, it's not actually a new concept. This was actually written about back in 1906 and ever since then as well in many books, including law of attraction type books, the science of manifesting really goes deep down towards quantum physics. And the fact that everything is energy, your energy, I'm energy, the chair we're sitting on has energy, the fruit we eat, the food we eat, the air we breathe, everything has atoms and cells and molecules and is composed of energy. You know it when you feel when you go inside a a hotel and it it has like static energy and maybe the energy of a room at a conference is not as maybe great as you would like. So you feel the energy of people, whether it's in a crowd or whether it's in a nightclub or even at a party that you're going to, you feel the energy of the people. Like attracts like. And so definitely, you know, if you're into yoga, I'm into yoga and we could both easily connect just with yoga itself, but I'm sure with many other things as well. But the thought here is that our thoughts, emotions, feelings are all made up of energy. And so because of this, different emotions have different frequencies. When we change our thoughts, we change how we feel and what emotions we experience, which in turn shifts our entire vibrational frequency. We then attract back to us the frequency that we put out. So if we alter our thoughts, if we alter our emotions, We can also alter our vibrations and ultimately our reality. And granted, there are some feelings, some energies out there that are low vibrational and high vibrational. Let me just give you some examples. High vibrational emotions would be unconditional love, would be peace, joy, gratitude, kindness, enthusiasm, optimism, hope, confidence. And low vibrational emotions would look like fear, hatred, guilt, resentment, despair, anger, jealousy, sadness, anxiety, worry, annoyance. Those are the type of low vibrational emotions. So depending on how you're feeling, depending on how things are going, you know, we could be attracting more negative energy or better positive energy and therefore better positive reality and outcomes. And so this is quite interesting when you start to look at this in from a different lens. There's other people today that have mastered this, including Dr. Joe Dispenza, Oprah Winfrey, Eckhart Tolle, and so many more. And so in this podcast episode, I'm going to go over a couple steps of the seven steps that you need in order to manifest anything you want in your life, but including the hair growth, because you can apply this as you can apply many things to healing, to your hair growth journey, to anything, again, that you want in life. When I look back at my own journey, I I truly believe I've manifested, you know, certain jobs, certain situations, relationships, and so much more, and and even opportunities to do what I want or to do what, what I dream of. Because in another way to look at manifesting, you could say it's goal oriented, right? You could also say it's dreaming, and say, oh, I dream to, 
you know, speak to Oprah and be on her show. She no longer has a TV show, but let's say that that was the case then, you know, this could be something that I could manifest, or maybe she does a one-time special, like who knows, right? But if this is the dream, if this is the goal, then, you know, when you put in these steps to make it happen, then things happen magically. And again, it's a beautiful balance of that wisdom that we mentioned earlier, but also of that science of attracting that next opportunity. And I can give you many examples, even in my own personal life of how that's happened, but it's definitely a beautiful thing. And if you put it into practice, I'm very clear and very conscientious that it is possible for you to manifest what you want in this world, whether it's the hair growth, whether it's the health, whether it's, you know, a pregnancy, whether it's, Uh, a new house, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new relationship, whether it's anything else that you're desiring. I truly believe that it's yours for the taking. I truly believe. So let's get into this. How do we manifest what we want, including the hair growth? So step one is being clear in what you want, being very clear in your vision. You know, there are levels of of vagueness. There are levels of, of descriptions that we could give And we could provide. So for example, instead of saying, I want a garden full of flowers, what I would really want to say is, because the object here is to be very specific, is to say, I want a garden with thousand peonies and a thousand tulips and a thousand daffodils, all of different colors. And so that would be more specific. And so this is where you would say, this is what I want. It's not just, I want an orchard, right? I want a fruit tree in my backyard. No, it's not, I you want a fruit tree. You want an apple tree. And so being very specific is what the universe wants, right? Because it's just like saying, I want a boyfriend. Okay, you want a boyfriend. Well, what is this boyfriend? You know, what are the characteristics? You want it short? You want it tall? What country are they from? Like what, what their name is, what their job is, what are their interests? Like this could mean so many things. And so when we're specific, then then the universe delivers the specificity of our heart's desires. And yeah, I I mean, I've experienced this myself. I I truly believe I've manifested so many things in my life, including, like I said, relationships and opportunities and jobs and many things. And, you know, if you put it into practice, I I truly believe it, it can happen. But we have to be specific. And that's the first line of order is that we need to be specific with what we want. So being as specific as possible is so much easier than being vague. So again, that analogy of a garden, well, don't just say, I want a beautiful garden. I want a garden with, you know, the thousand roses, a thousand tulips, or however many, or whatever color, daffodils, or what have you. Let's be more specific. So that's number one. At the same time that you're wanting this, that you're saying this, that you're, you know, telling the world that this, that this is what you want is to visualize it. I talk about visualizing here and there within the podcast episodes because visualizing is a great technique that athletes use, that high successful entrepreneurs use, and people who have made huge contributions to society and to the world. They've visualized something happening, whether it was them, you know, getting the gold medal at the Olympics or whether it was them achieving their dream of having a rocket ship fly everyone to the moon or what have you. And so visualizing is part of this. When you think back about how trains, planes, cars started back in the late 1800s, early 90s, it it was a tremendous time for our society, for our world. And it changed everything how we know it today. And at the same time, these people started with a dream. They started, you know, creating the car, creating the wheel, creating engines, creating all of the pieces that go together for a plane, for a car, for a train, in bite-sized pieces, but they had the overall dream. Like, what if we could fly people in the air? What if, right? It all started with a question, with a desire, with a visualization. And so visualizing how this would look is part of manifesting. So being clear with what we want, visualizing would go under that. Another way to visualize would be potentially, if you've heard of this, is to have a dream board. Dream boards are great and you can do this however often you'd like and create that dream board for different areas of your life. In this case, it's for health. So maybe pictures of the way you looked before with the full hair growth and visualizing yourself on a consistent basis, you with full hair and also saying to yourself in a mirror that you are going to heal and having that conviction that you are going to heal. I'll say that once we start interchanging 
the negative thoughts that we tell ourselves on a daily basis with positive thoughts. And when we start cleaning out our subconscious with better positive images, this creates a more gigantic momentum towards our healing process. How so? Because we start to change the vibes that we have, change the frequency that we're throwing out. And instead of in this doom and gloom, worry, anxious state, now we're turning things into a more empowered state. We're turning things into more of a, I can heal. I may not know how or what those steps look like, but definitely I'm going to get closer with a positive mindset. I'll say, and in a personal note, I believe that the positive mindset is your key to success in so many areas of life, but including healing your alopecia. If you have a a negative mindset, you may still heal, but for sure, it probably will take you longer. And because nothing will grow with negativity, it's always going to be from a positive space, a positive perspective, where we can try to see the silver lining and overcome it. That's one of the keys to to healing is, is really having that positive mindset and overcoming all the negativity, all the naysayers. And that's actually our next step, really, is removing all fear and doubt. Removing all fear and doubt is, again, having that conviction. This is step two to manifesting anything you want, including the hair growth. Removing all fear and doubt. This is where we put boundaries against all the naysayers, that we forge our own path, that we believe with conviction that we can heal, and that we are worthy. And having fear and doubt many times is correlated to us feeling worthy enough. And so here are some questions that I want you to ask yourself in this next exercise of feeling worthy of feeling the fear and the doubt and putting that away. Some questions you would want to ask yourself is, do I really believe I am worthy of this? Of this meaning the healing of the alopecia, healing of the hair loss. Because if you think you are not worthy, then this may not happen for you. But if you do have a sense of strong self-worth, then definitely it would be more likely for you to overcome this. Do I really trust that I would be able to handle it? And I believe so. I believe we could all handle healing. We could all handle the hair growth. But granted, that journey may look different for everybody. Do I really believe, is it possible for me? And that's a big one. I will say that I myself had the conviction that I would heal. I didn't know how. I didn't have the steps in front of me. And I believed I I would heal. And I will say there were moments of doubt. There were moments of me potentially saying, okay, well, this is another failed experiment. I don't know if, if I should keep going. And I gave myself some time. I gave myself that grace. I gave myself the half day to, to cry or a full day to cry. But then guess what? I jumped back on the horse onto what I needed to do to ensure I was moving forward, moving forward. Because that's all I know. You have to move forward to get somewhere. You can't move backwards, right? So do I really believe, is it possible for me? This is a big one. And that's only you can answer. If you really believe that you can heal from alopecia, you will heal. I can guarantee you that. If you believe that it's possible, you will heal. But if you don't believe that it's possible, you've already lost. And it's much more than hair loss. You've lost the self-confidence. You've lost you lost that possibility because the thing is what we think, what we hold true to ourselves is what allows us to propel through momentum, to propel through motivation, to propel through any obstacle or any challenge that we are encountering. If you don't believe, then you're going to be stuck and you're going to be losing and continue to lose that hair for for as long as, as it takes until you actually turn the tide in terms of frequency, emotions, thoughts, beliefs, because that's a big one. I, I can't stress that enough. It is a big one. Another question you may be asking yourself is what limiting beliefs are holding me back? I talk about limiting beliefs a lot because limiting beliefs are a big deal. If you think you can't heal it, then you're not going to be able to move the needle in terms of what's needed to heal. But if you're willing and able to do what's possible, doing and able to do even the baby steps, the low hanging fruit, if you're willing and able to even just move forward and the first step then you can overcome this. You can. Think back to the tortoise and the hare. This is a classic story time book where the hare, right, the rabbit, you would think would get to the finish line first and foremost. But for whatever reason, he didn't. And the turtle did. The turtle, slow and steady, got to the finish line. And that's what we need. We need slow and steady. Many times it could be faster and steady, but it needs to be a steady pace. It really does. Because when you exert so much 
energy and then you lose the energy and you lose the motivation, you lose all these things, potentially you're also hindering yourself in terms of that healing process. So start asking yourself, where do I feel fear? Where do I feel the doubt? Because we need to annihilate that. We need to annihilate the fear. We need to annihilate the doubt because that in it of itself is holding us back. When we give ourselves full permission to dream, our fears and doubts have nowhere to hide. To manifest anything into your life and to do so effortlessly and effectively, you must believe you are worthy of having it. Potentially, maybe you're manifesting a million dollars or potentially you're manifesting the hottest guy on the planet to marry you. Or maybe you're fantasizing or dreaming about something else that you'd like to that seems to you unachievable or unattainable. But the universe knows no boundaries. This is where you can flip the script and get what you want. But that fear and that doubt, that even if it's like a minuscule amount of doubt, needs to go away, needs to be squashed. Fear and doubt often mask themselves as friends. They tell you they're protecting you from the the inevitable disappointment, when in reality, they are actively holding you back from unlocking the abundance of the universe. Many times I've moved into fear. So whenever I've feared something, I move closer to it. That's my trick in overcoming fear. I move closer to it and I move closer to it to conquer it, to overcome it and to really see for what it is. Because sometimes you could be standing away, seeing the fear and not understanding why it is that you fear this. And so sometimes change is uncomfortable, right? And so when we feel uncomfortable with something new, potentially there's that fear, then this is where we're like, hmm, maybe this, maybe that. And then we start to doubt ourselves. We doubt that it's possible for us. We doubt that things are not going to work out for our benefit. And so this, again, is where the subconscious mind obeys the conscious mind. So whatever we consciously think, our subconscious will perceive to be true. So this is where when you're not removing the fear and the doubt, and we have certain beliefs, then it will actually backfire on us. This is part of mastering our thoughts. This is also part of not allowing negative thoughts to roam free. This is also part of controlling the unregulated and the unmanaged thoughts, taking ownership of them and start to practice managing thoughts so that they can work for us instead of against us. Because anything that we think is true, our mind is going to already think it's true already, even though it could be completely wrong. This is why misinformation runs rampant. This is why the myths to healing hair loss are not well known because we think, right? Because we've been told so many times that we're losing hair because of our age and that alopecia has no cure and that our type of alopecia has no known solution. And so when we start making a case for ourselves as to why we should have more doubt, why we should have more fear, then guess what? You're already working against yourself. So you're already winning that, but you're not really winning the hair growth or the possibility to even get there. Does that make sense? I hope this makes sense because it's clear as day for me. So some ways that we can avoid fear and doubt and kind of put the kibosh on it is to watch our language, watch what we say. For example, I have friends right now who are trying to get pregnant and they're in their forties. And so late thirties, forties. And so what I would say to them, you know, if I were to hear them speak, I would say, you're not pregnant yet and leave it open-ended. You're not pregnant yet, da 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 Instead of saying, oh, I'm not pregnant. Saying I'm not pregnant sets the tone that you're not pregnant and nothing's happening, right? That's what you allude. That's what you assume. But once you say I'm not pregnant yet means that it's still yet to come. And so potentially if you're losing hair now or going bald now, what you would say is, I don't have hair growth yet, but it's coming. Have that anticipation, have that perspective of anticipatory hair growth, anticipatory healing, and have that anticipation for the healing and for the hair growth because you believe, right? That's a requirement. You believe that this is going to happen for you. And so putting that into the universe, throwing that out into space is necessary for you to hone in on what you want, having the universe hear you, and then showing you the way. So removing the word if and replace it with when. And I do this a lot actually in my podcast too. So I have clients who talk to me even before they're actually clients 
And they're like, well, do you think I'm going to get hair growth? And I'm like, well, it's not about if you get hair growth, it's about when you get hair growth. I always say this, it's not about if, it's about when. We can all grow hair, all of us. Even for those of you with scarring, I've seen it. I've had numerous clients with scarring alopecia. You can grow hair. It's not about if, it's about when. When you grow hair. When you grow hair is when you follow the steps tailored to you inside the Hair and Heal program. When you grow hair is when you follow the recommendations. When you grow hair is when you take action. When you grow hair is when we support ourselves correctly, the way it should be for our own hair growth. This is why me and so many others have been able to overcome hair growth, hair loss in such a short amount of time, if you think about it in reality, and be able to keep it long-term. This is not just for a few people, a few special people. This is for everybody. And so just like manifesting, it's for everybody, but we need to remove the word if and replace it with when and take out these doubts and take out these fears, right? Let's talk about more about what we do want instead of what we don't want. So during COVID, everyone was saying, oh, I don't want to get COVID. I don't want to get COVID. And lo and behold, they probably got COVID at some point. And so when we talk more about what we don't want, it's almost like you're calling it in, right? But when we talk more about what we do want, then we're also calling that in. And so being mindful with our language is key as well. Being mindful with with how we speak. Maybe as a parent, if you're a parent listening to this, you would see this and hear this more in your child. So instead of, let's say, when your child says, I can't do it, we would switch this to, I can do anything I put my mind to. If you have a child or a loved one or even yourself that says, I have low self-esteem, then you would switch that to, I have high self-esteem. Or when they're saying, I will never succeed, then you say, I will do my best and that is enough. When someone says, I don't know how, we switch that to, I can ask for help to understand how. When someone says, I'm not good enough, then you say, I am capable of anything. I am capable of anything because all of you are worthy, 100%. When someone says, it won't work out, We switch this to everything will work out exactly as it's supposed to. When someone says, I'm afraid of failing, we switch that to, I am excited to try. I'll say that when things don't work out, sometimes it's in the best of your benefit. So for example, I had a phone call with a service provider, a videographer that I'm trying to hire for my upcoming presentation at the biohacking conference, which is May 30th through June 1st in Dallas, Texas. For any of you who want to join me at the biohacking conference, I will be presenting and speaking at the conference. And so I'm trying to get a videographer to film everything. I've gone through a couple different videographers, either because it wasn't the right fit or because we were double booked. Like this last one, we were double booked. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't able to work with this person because again, they double booked us and their calendar got busy, right? And so now I had to find another person. But all of a sudden, when I had a a phone call with this videographer, with the new one that I'm going to take, she and her friend have alopecia, lo and behold. And they're really into all the other speakers of this health and wellness conference that I'll be speaking at. And we connected on so many levels. And so sometimes things fall apart, but it's because it's in your benefit. I'd like to say that when you have a delayed flight or when a service provider is no longer available or when you couldn't get into the hair appointment at the time that you needed or when things don't work out like you'd like, think back like, okay, what is this teaching me? What is this maybe helping me to do, right? Because I wanted a great videographer. I wanted somebody who like understood my vision and who could help me, you know, film my presentation and everything. And so after speaking with this lady, I felt like we were on the same page. And even though I've literally spent like the last couple months trying to find a videographer, it was really hard for me to find one, but then I found her. And all of a sudden now I also realized that she also travels. And so the next time I have a conference in any other city or country, I'm going to take her with me. And so the thing is, it's like many times things can fall apart, not always, but can fall apart. But once they do, sometimes it's because you're being upgraded. Hasn't that ever happened to you where all of a sudden you're checking into your flight and lo and behold, your seat's taken or they bumped you out or now you're upgraded to business class. Hasn't that ever happened to you? It's happened to me a couple of times. Or even on this uh, last flight that I took, we were supposed to have somebody in the middle between me, my husband and my son. And the person didn't show up. So we actually had an extra seat in between us. And so these little mistakes, 
actually turned out to be something so helpful and all of a sudden gave us extra room on this long haul flight. So sometimes when it doesn't work out, it's actually also helping you towards that next step and bringing you closer to what you truly need. Because again, I truly believe that the universe has your back and you can't live life without thinking that, you know, someone is there, someone, something, the energy, right, that you're putting out is coming back to you. So if you put out the good vibes and and that, that mindset that, you know, everything's happening, happening to you, for you, not to you, but for you. And that things are happening in the best intent for the best intentions for your highest good. Just like the videographer that I'm now using is much more on a connected level with me versus the other person who didn't have too much respect for my time and, you know, double booked. Does this make sense? And so another way to allow us to be mindful with our language is to also accept compliments. I know sometimes women are are very modest and they don't like to accept compliments, but I will say this is a great way of allowing the universe to see that you're worthy, allowing the universe to see that you are worthy of that dream, of that manifestation, of the hair growth and of so much more and of the healing, right? When we're able to accept compliments Really, instead of, you know, if someone were to pay you a compliment and you're and, and in return, you're saying, no, no, that's not really me. No, no, and no, not at all. Or if you're trying to be modest all the time, well, then it's almost like you're rejecting. You're rejecting the love. You're rejecting the beauty. You're rejecting the goodness that's coming your way. And it's the same thing of maybe allowing for help, maybe not necessarily in compliments, but it could be the type A person who doesn't allow people to help her, doesn't allow people to help him. And then all of a sudden you start to be more flexible and you start to allow people to help you. And this is also another wonderful way to show the universe that you are worthy, that you don't have to do this all by yourself. It's really an upward battle when you try to take on everything by yourself. Asking for help is okay. It doesn't make you weaker. And asking for help is a beautiful thing. And especially when it comes to the healing alopecia process, I'm telling you, with help is the only way to go. With somebody who knows, with somebody who's knowledgeable, who's been there, done that, that's the only way to go. Another thing that I like to do too is use mantras. Using mantras like, I can do anything I set my mind to. I believe that. I say that to myself and and I believe it. Anything I set my mind to, I can achieve. And that's including the healing of the alopecia. And that's including getting pregnant in my 40s and having a healthy baby. And that's including so many other things that has happened. Like anything you want, set your mind to it and it can happen. That's my mantra, but you can create your own. You can create your, your own mantras, your own affirmations. I believe these are powerful tools that you can tell yourself that you can use on a daily basis to support the visualization, to support your dreams, to support the manifestation of your highest desire, which at this point I know is hair growth, but it could also be health. It could also be getting pregnant. It could also be so many other things. So some mantras that I'd like to share with you as examples could be, I love the person that I am today. I have limitless potential. I am grateful for all that I have. I love my life. I feel calm and at peace. I radiate vitality and energy. I have infinite power to manifest anything I desire. I am consistently attracting abundance into my life. One way we can use mantras to reprogram our subconscious beliefs is to listen to a positive affirmations track. Like you can create your own, you can record yourself and create and listen to this at night or every day. But you could also listen to affirmations online, read them in books, and then listen to them also on YouTube. Practicing the visualization, as I mentioned before, is key as well. Cultivating and practicing self-love is another way to let go of the fear and the doubt. Our minds have incredible power. They are both the cause and the cure of our fear and our doubt. So when we cultivate and practice self-love, self-love is the driving force behind manifesting. It's us knowing that we are worthy, us knowing that it's our innate birthright, that it's our innate biology, that we can make the changes necessary. We can make the tweaks. We can put in a little effort to create the reality that we're seeking. Without self-love, you cannot manifest. There is no point in creating a vision board and talking about life of your dreams if day to day you still treat yourself with disrespect. This is huge. Creating and practicing self-love, cultivating it is an effort in its own. So let's clarify a little bit what self-love really means. Self-love means truly valuing your own well-being and happiness. 
Let me say that again. Self-love means truly valuing your own well-being and happiness. Self-love means showing up for yourself and championing yourself. Self-love means letting go of judgment, regret, and negative self-talk. Self-love means embracing the most authentic version of yourself. Self-love means offering yourself the same level of kindness, patience, and forgiveness that you offer so freely to others. Isn't that big? That's so big. It's so huge to see this on paper, but then to also read it out to you because we do so much for others, especially as women in general, men too, I include you. We do so much for others, whether it's a friend, a family member, a sibling, a loved one, a child, we do so much, but how much do we give back to ourselves? How much grace, forgiveness, and patience, kindness do we give to ourselves? How much judgment, regret, and negative self-talk are we letting go of? How are we championing ourselves and showing up for ourselves? Are we truly valuing our well-being and happiness? Are we being our most authentic version of ourselves and not caring what other people think? I'll say that many times I'll get people, some clients that say, oh, but you know, my journey, I've already spent thousands of dollars. I've already spent thousands of dollars and I got zero results and zero results. But you know what? It's led them to me. And with me, they've seen results. And I'll say, like, if we don't value our own well-being, if we don't value our own happiness, then we're always going to be miserable. We're always going to be two steps, five steps, 10 steps behind the curve of what we want to be, of where we want to be, right? It's not about others. It's not about what others think, care, or how they look at us or what they, you know, what their opinions are. Do you want hair? Yes or no. Do you want the healing? Yes or no. Do you value your well-being, your health, your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health? Yes or no. It's really easy to say yes or no to any of these things. And, you know, again, when the fear and the doubt creep in, we got to shut it out because it will lead you closer to exactly where you need to be, exactly to the healing spot, exactly to that next step. But we have to remove the fear and the doubt. So how do we begin to cultivate the self-love? Well, we begin by becoming more aware and more mindful. We honor where we are in the process. And, you know, in many ways, I didn't do that during my own self-healing journey. I wasn't honoring necessarily where I was. I gave myself a lot of grace and compassion because I had no guide. I had no coach to lead me. So I gave myself a lot of grace and compassion, but I also whipped my butt into shape and said, get back on it. Wake up. Let's go. I mean, if, if there's anyone more strict with me, it's me. There's no one more strict with me than me. It truly honoring where you are is crucial because I see it time and time again. When my clients come to me, they come to me in a very low vibe state in many cases, but then literally by three, four weeks, the frequency, the vibration changes and it's automatic. It, it's like the moon to the sun and it's automatic. It's a beautiful thing. That transformation can happen, but we need to honor where we are so that we can move forward. Honoring ourselves is also that self-love practice of valuing ourselves, championing for ourselves, advocating for ourselves, and to keep going for ourselves. I had a mom in the program who did the program for her own hair loss. And she's like, you know, I feel so guilty. She said to me time and time again, I feel so guilty because I'm taking away money, time, resources, all for my hair healing journey. She had been on this journey for years trying to figure out what was going on. And she didn't understand. She's quote unquote, done everything under the sun. And then she found me and then, you know, she started seeing the hair growth, but she had this tremendous guilt of taking away the time, money, the mindset, the everything was focused towards her hair growth. And so again, that guilt crept in. And, and I told her, look, it's like, if you're not the person who you want to be today, everyone else is going to be affected. You have to be the best version of you so that your kids get the best of you. Your husband gets the best of you. Your coworkers get the best of you. Your neighbors, your family, your friends get the best of you. If you are a shadow or just a small percentage of who you used to be with hair because of the hair loss, then that's not who you truly are. You truly are somebody who used to have health, who used to have the hair, and you want to be that person back again. And you can, just like I am, just like so many others are. And so when I decided, hey, I'm not the best version of myself, and I'm going into this relationship, into my new marriage, into this relationship, I don't want to be this person. I don't want to be the person who's crying, who's anxious, who's worrying, who's like concerned, who's you know what I mean? I don't want to be that person because that's not me. And I know where you are right now. This is not you. 
This is a shadow. This is just a small sliver of who you are underneath it all. But it's because the situation has created this. I will say once you get going on the effort, on the path, on the road to recovery, a new you, a better you, a better version of you will emerge. And you will be better, not just for you, but for everyone around yourself. That in and of itself is priceless. Honor where you are right now and honor where you want to be tomorrow. Those are two things that go hand in hand. Honor where you are right now and honor where you want to be tomorrow. Yes, you're moving towards the hair growth. Yes, you're moving towards the health. Yes, you're moving towards all these other goals. Honor where you are today and understand that nothing happens overnight. Understand that whether it's the losing weight, getting pregnant, growing hair, it's not overnight, but it will happen and it can happen. And you are infinite possibilities and you are infinite opportunity for this to happen. The ultimate practice of self-love is perfectly balancing what you need today with what your future self needs tomorrow. That's a big one too. I'll say this practice of understanding what you need today and who that future self of yours needs tomorrow is beautifully balanced inside the program. Because once you start seeing what's best for you, for your hair growth, for your health, then it it makes it a no brainer to switch and to pivot and to be like, okay, I don't need this anymore because this is gonna bring me closer to my goals. And so once you know that, then you just do it. It's that easy, it really is. Lastly, I'd like to say is that, you know, understand that as of right now, you're doing the best you can be doing. And that's even for me. We're doing the best that we can be doing, whether it's in one goal or another, whether it's in hair growth or in another dream that we have or another goal that we have, we're doing the best we can, but we can always do better. And we can always grow on top of that and create more effort and create more consistency, right? There is always a valuable lesson to take away from any and every experience. That's also a key takeaway here. Always a valuable lesson to take from any and every experience. Lastly, we are not the same person we were then, We have since grown, evolved, and matured. That's exactly what's happened to me and what's happened to all my clients before, during, and after the alopecia. They were somebody else before alopecia. They became a different person during alopecia. And outside, after healing, now there's somebody completely new, evolved, matured, wiser, grown, and outside of their cocoon. And so eliminating the fear and the doubt is key to your success. That's step number two. So everything I was just talking about is all under step number two. The truth is this, by learning from our mistakes and experiences and by evolving through them, you practice the greatest form of self-love, which is to grow. And that in and of itself is step one and step two of your seven steps to living your best life, manifesting anything you want, including the hair growth. I'm going to pause here and continue on next week so we can go over steps three and four and then keep going the following weeks after that, depending on how far we come along. I hope you are enjoying this podcast. If you have any questions, concerns, topics that you'd like for me to touch upon, anything else, feel free to email us at hello at alopeciaangel.com. You can also go to my homepage and look at all the free PDFs that you can download, including medications that cause hair loss, and side effects of multiple medications for alopecia in general. There's also other hair products that cause hair loss as well, uh, PDF and a bunch of others as well. Thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you next time. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Alopecia Angel podcast, a positive light in healing alopecia. You can do this and we can help. Spread the word that reversing alopecia is possible by telling your friends and family. 